friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 3rd of August and we are going to deal with two very important topics which are in news. First, subcategorization of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. Supreme Court in a landmark judgment, 6-1 means there were 7 judges, 6 favoured in, in, in the favour of you know, subcategorization. Subcategorization or subclassification means that scheduled caste as a category will be subclassified into those people who have got the benefits of reservation and those who have not got the benefits. Those who have not got the benefits, they will be given more attention as compared to those who have got the benefits. Those who have got the benefits, they have not been removed out of this net of reservation, but yes, they will be given less benefits. This is what this subcategorization means. Lithium reserves on JNK. 18 months from now, JNK, the world's largest lithium reserves were discovered. Lithium is very important. It is described as a critical mineral because this is very much instrumental in manufacturing electronic equipments of the day. Batteries, because EVs are becoming more and more prominent. And we in India currently depend upon China for lithium imports. That is why this discovery was significant. But no company has you know volunteered for auctions or taking of these lithium blocks of jammu and kashmir that is the challenge which the government is facing right now so let's see what the challenges are then we'll go to the mcqs and then we'll discuss the mcqs of first of august and we'll conclude this session now subcategorization to understand subcategorization we need to understand the concept of equity and to understand the concept of equity we can go through an example let's suppose this is a wall beyond this wall is basically a cricket ground where a cricket match is happening three friends decide to go and watch this match but all these three are of different heights the tallest able to see the match the second tallest obviously not able to see the match and the shortest quite obvious not able to see the match this is the wall in front of them now if support is given to this and this person they will be able to see the match now this is the kind of support if given to them they will be able to see the match and you can see the support given is different more support is given to the most vulnerable the shortest less amount of support is given to the second shortest or second tallest and no support is given to the tallest this unequal support to the unequals these are unequals is called as equity so that the end result is equality both all the three are equal now at equal height but yes these two some support had to be given the entire reservation is premised on this phenomenon, on this concept. And reservation initially was given to scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. So general was there, 15% to scheduled caste, 7.5% to scheduled tribes. It was like this. This was the situation in 1950. The reservation was given for 10 years. Some members in scheduled caste and scheduled tribes were able to take the advantage of the reservation given to them, but some were not. Then in 1991-92, there was a third category introduced, 50.5% general, 15% SC, 7.5% ST and 27% OBC. But in OBC, there was a phenomenon which was applied. Let's suppose this is the entire OBC category. A phenomenon was implied and that phenomenon was the phenomenon of creamy layer. It was decided that the people who are in OBC, their one generation has taken the advantage of reservation, their future generations will not be getting the advantages. Those people who have got the advantages and are there up to that meeting the standards of being in the creamy layer, they will come out of the net of reservation. They will not be given reservation. So we can say that this subcategorization in OBC was there. Creamy layer, non-creamy layer is the subcategorization. And this kind of subcategorization now 
the Supreme Court has said will be there in SC and ST also. So let's suppose this is SC and this is ST. We will identify the kind of creamy layer of SC and ST and we will identify the bottommost rung which have not got the benefits of reservation. But the difference over here in SC, ST creamy layer and OBC creamy layer is that OBC creamy layer is not getting the benefits of reservation, those who are there in the creamy layer. But in SC, ST, those who are there in the creamy layer of SC, ST will also be given reservation. They are not out of the reservation net. This is what Supreme Court has clearly said. Ha! Huh. More benefits will be given to these people and less benefits will be given to these people. The creamy layer of SC and ST. This is the main purpose of subcategorization or classification in SCST in this judgment of the Supreme Court. Now, were there any attempts made earlier for subcategorization or this is the first attempt? Actually, there were attempts made earlier also. Attempts were being made by Andhra Pradesh government. Before that, Punjab government also made those attempts. So, we'll consider those attempts also made by those governments now in this particular topic. So, in this 6-1 landmark verdict, Supreme Court on August 1 allowed the subcategorization of scheduled caste and reservations. A seven-judge constitution bench headed by Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachur, has thus ruled on whether subclassification of scheduled caste and scheduled tribe is permissible for the purpose of reservation or not. And they have said that it is permissible for the purpose of reservation. Who can be categorized as the most vulnerable? This becomes a question because now Netaji is what they can do. They are searching for vote banks. They can classify the ones who have got the reservation, uh, who have got the benefits of reservation as most vulnerable because their more benefits are available. People obviously want more and more benefits. And those people will give votes to the Netaji. So for purpose of vote bank also this subcat classification can be used. That is a major concern. The Supreme Court has clearly said that empirical data should be there on which this classification should be done and this classification is also subject to judicial scrutiny means the courts can you know interfere in this classification what is the logic behind that classification what is the empirical data behind this classification you the governments will have to testify this it is not like you do it for vote bank politics or something like that so this has been made clear state will have to justify that the group for which more beneficial treatment is provided means the lower rung is inadequately represented as compared to the other caste in the state said list. So they should be inadequately represented. Can all the seats reserved for SCST be available for the subclass? Now what does this question mean? Let, let's suppose this is you know that category scheduled caste category let's suppose. Now the states cannot subclassify the quota which simply means providing the subclassification the state would not be entitled to reserve 100% seats like for a service, let's suppose a job has been rolled out and 15% is reserved for the SC in that job category. Now, and, and that subclassification has been done. The lower category is over here. Now, the judgment clearly said that all these 15% of the seats should not be given to this lower rung. Some should be given to them also, the upper rung. That is why I said that reservation is not ending for the upper category in the scheduled caste or scheduled tribe list. They will get access to the benefits of reservation. But yes, lesser benefits, more benefits. This is going to be the difference. So, this is there. The background. In January 2024, a seven-judge constitution bench headed by Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachur, reserved the judgment in subclassification among scheduled caste case. So, January may... Chief Justice of India reserved the judgment. Why was the case filed in Supreme Court? Some states have argued that despite reservation, some castes are grossly underrepresented in the services or in the employment. They want to create a separate quota for such castes within the SC quota of 15%. So, that is what the case was. Another case which was there in the Supreme Court was E.V. Chennaiya case. E.V. Chennaiya versus State of Andhra Pradesh. Now what happened in the year 2000, the state government of Andhra Pradesh passed a law. That law is named as 
आंध्र प्रदेश शेड्यूल कास्ट रेशनलाइजेशन ऑफ रिजर्वेशन एक्ट टू थाउजेंड तो एस सी कैटेगरी वॉज सब क्लासिफाइड एंड विद दिस इंटेंशन दैट द लोअर रंग पीपल इन द शेड्यूल कास्ट विल बी गिवेन मोर बेनिफिट एंड दिस लॉ वॉज चैलेंज बाई सम इन द कोर्ट एंड दैट सम वॉज ईवी चेनैया दैट हाउ कैन द गवर्नमेंट डू दिस सब क्लासिफिकेशन एंड दिस वायलेट द राइट टू इक्वालिटी हाउ एवर द राइट टू इक्वालिटी गेट्स वायलेटेड इन रिजर्वेशन ऑल्सो वेयर एस सी एस टी एंड ऑल आर गिवेन मोर बेनिफिट एज कंपेयर टू द जनरल राइट ऑफ इक्वालिटी इज गेटिंग वायलेटेड ओवर हेयर ऑल्सो वेन द अपर you know are giving less are given less benefits and these are given more benefits the lower ones to so, ev chiraiya probably would have been belonging to this upper category that is why he filed a case against the government who wanted to give more preference to the scs over here in the lower category now another question which arose was can state governments pass such laws to give reservation benefits or is it only the prerogative of the president now as per article 341 of the constitution the president is empowered to declare any category in the scheduled caste list as per article 342 the president is empowered to declare any category as scheduled tribe in the scheduled tribe list but how does the president declare it there is a procedure state governments recommend to the ministry of social justice then this goes to the registrar general of india from there if ministry of social justice approves it from registrar general of india it goes to national commission of scheduled caste from here it comes to the cabinet and then finally it goes to the president for approval in case of st it initiates from the state governments it goes to the ministry of tribal affairs from there it goes to the registrar general of india from there it goes to the national commission of scheduled tribes from here it goes to the cabinet and then finally on the recommendations of the cabinet the president declares a category to be declared under scheduled ca scheduled tribe or not so article 341 is giving power to the president to categorize any category under scheduled caste or not but there is this route which is followed which initiates from the state government for scheduled tribes again 342 president but initiation is from the state governments so on that basis state government pass that law also that if we have to identify we can identify better because we are there at the grassroots level so they pass that law andhra pradesh government and they said that for state services at least we will be giving you know sub we will be sub classifying the scheduled caste category and will be giving more benefits to the you know most deprived ones now only the president could notify which communities could receive reservation benefits as per article 341 of the constitution this was declared by the supreme court in uh, this ev jaraiya case and state governments have no role in this so this you know law that is andhra pradesh scheduled caste personalization of reservation act uh, rationalization of reservation act 2000 was nullified and it was being violative of right to equality also that was another reason for it to be nullified and this all happened in the year 2004 number of states have told the supreme court ki bhai review this decision of ev chennaiya in which you cancelled out sub categorization given by the andhra pradesh state government to the people but andhra pradesh was not the only state which gave sub categorization sub classification or sub categorization was done by punjab in the year 1975 and punjab did it by executive order and there it classified supri uh, sorry uh, scheduled caste into two categories one balmiki and mazhabi six communities they were more vulnerable so they were to be given first preference for reservation in education and public employment second category consisted for the rest of sc communities so this sub classification in the sc communities was get done by punjab government in 1975 through a you know executive order no law was passed for this this was continuing and then in 2000 this happened in andhra pradesh a case was filed against this law in 2004 supreme court struck down this law so in this ev chennaiya versus state of andhra pradesh andhra pradesh wala law was struck down this andhra pradesh scheduled caste rationalization of reservation act two years after this this was done in 2004 then two years after this in 
पंजाब एंड हरियाणा हाई कोर्ट इन डॉक्टर किशन पाल वर्सेज स्टेट ऑफ पंजाब स्ट्रक डाउन दाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव नोटिफिकेशन वो भी खत्म हो गया दैट वॉज ऑल्सो ओवर इन अक्टूबर टू थाउजेंड सिक्स फोर मंथस आफ्टर द पंजाब एंड हरियाणा हाई कोर्ट स्ट्रक डाउन दिस सब कैटेगराइजेशन पंजाब गवर्नमेंट पास पंजाब शेड्यूल कास्ट एंड बैकवर्ड क्लासेज रिजर्वेशन इन सर्विस एक्ट टू थाउजेंड सिक्स बट इन टू थाउजेंड टेन दिस लॉ वॉज ऑल्सो स्क्रैप्ड मीन्स नाउ नो स्टेट इन इंडिया नॉर इवन द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट वॉज हैविंग सब कैटेगराइजेशन फॉर शेड्यूल कास्ट लिस्ट और शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स बट नाउ दिस जजमेंट हैज कम एंड सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज अलाउड सब कैटेगराइजेशन सो दिस इज देर वाई द एस सी इज रिकन्सिडरिंग द चेन्नैया केस बिकॉज इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन इन सुप्रीम कोर्ट दविंदर सिंह वर्सेज स्टेट ऑफ पंजाब इट वॉज क्वेश्चन की भैया ई वी चेन्नैया केस शुड बी रिव्यूड अगेन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बेंच हेडेड बाई जस्टिस अरुण मिश्रा हेल्ड दैट द कोर्ट्स टू थाउजेंड फोर डिसीजन इन ई वी चेन्नैया केस रिक्वायर्स रिकन्सिडरेशन दस रूलिंग दैट द कोर्ट एंड द स्टेट कैन नॉट बी अ साइलेंट स्पेक्टेटर एंड शट इट्स आइज टू स्टार्क रियालिटीज वट आर स्टार्क रियालिटीज स्टार्क रियालिटीज आर दैट सम सेक्शन इन शेड्यूल कास्ट एंड शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स हैव नॉट गॉट द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ रिजर्वेशन सो दैट नीड्स टू बी एड्रेस्ड नाउ लिथियम रिजर्व इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर वन एंड हाफ ईयर्स अगो दे वर डिस्कवर्ड probably known to be the world's largest lithium reserves riyasi district of jammu and kashmir government put them up for auction round 1 the minimum requirement the government set was there should be minimum 3 bidders there were not 3 bidders present round 1 failed round 2 the government said i am removing this minimum requirement of 3 bidders but in round 2 not even a single bidder came for bidding that is that was the situation with respect to lithium reserves round one less than the required minimum number of three bidders were not there so you know this was counseled round two no qualified bidders at all were there so nobody was auctioning but why have the investors kept a distance that is to be understood difficulties around extracting and processing lithium from hard rock pegmatite deposits the ore which is there is known as pegmatite that is hard rock so there is difficulty from uh, extracting lithium from that rock so might be investors are shying away under developed mineral reporting standards the reporting standards by the government are under developed for that region so adequate information is not available with the investors no beneficiation study has been conducted beneficiation study simply means what amount of money cost manpower has to be uh, you know given in and what amount of output means the lithium or they will be getting that beneficiation study is not there so it is not letting the companies to put in their money blindly then limited information on of the block is there and block is being too small to apply modern mineral systems based tools on it so these are some of the challenges due to which the private investors or private miners they are shying away from it what can be expected next number 1 do the beneficiation studies increase or improve the reporting standards then things can happen number 2 what can happen is government can choose to skip the auction process and reserve the area for un the undertaking of prospecting of mining operations through a government owned company and government is allowed to do this under the mines and minerals development and regulation act mmdr act theek hai this is the first time critical mineral block was put to auction this lithium blocks of uh, you know jammu and kashmir the first time means from one year from now this was the first time when this critical mineral critical minerals are those minerals which are very much critical for the modern day economies status of other lithium deposits in india last month mines ministry successfully auctioned off india's first lithium block in chatisgarh's korba district and in chatisgarh only south of this auction of lithium block there is another hard rock lithium deposit ranging from 168 to 295 parts per million found Lithium reserves larger than J and K have been found in Rajasthan too, but they have not been auctioned as of now. But we the they found it. Lithium exploration in other states, however, has not been fruitful. Other states like Manipur, locals protested against it. Ladakh's Merak block, which is very much near to the Indo-China border, there the findings or the results were not so encouraging. So mining did not start over there. But yes. this clearly testifies that there are lithium reserves in india and with the finding of these lithium reserves in 
Jammu and Kashmir, Rajasthan and all. India is placed at the third position in this list of countries with the lithium reserves. First is Chile, second is Australia, third is India. Now, why is lithium important, significance of lithium? One, it is being used in manufacturing electronic and telecommunication devices and we are living in the digital age. We need these kind of devices. Second, it is an important input or an important raw material in manufacturing the batteries and for EVs, batteries are required. So EVs like India has this target set for itself that by 2030, 30% of private passenger cars will be EVs, 70% of commercial vehicles will be EVs and 80% of two and three wheelers will be EVs by 2030. So EVs will have batteries, batteries, you know, raw material is lithium. Experts say that discovery could lead to not only a reduction in India's dependence on foreign countries like China, but also bring down the cost of such batteries in future. Cost of such batteries coming down means cost of EVs coming down. Why? Because 45 to 50% of the cost of EV is the cost of battery only. And this will put India on track of reaching goal of net zero emissions. By 2070, we have this target. And it, it will help reduce India's dependence on China. That is very much important in the current geopolitical climate. Now, the MCQs. Consider the following statements and mark the correct one. Subcategorization of caste aligns with the phenomenon of equity. Subcategorization was allowed in the OBC category. Only one, only two, both one and two, neither one nor two. Which of these statements is are true? Second, consider the following statements and mark how many of them are correct. States are allowed to subcategorize castes only and not tribes for reservation. The most vulnerable class among SC will be getting more benefits of reservation. Telangana and Punjab had included provisions for subcategorizations earlier, but they were struck down by the courts. Only one statement is correct, only two statements are correct, all the statements are correct or none of the statements are correct, you have to find out. Third, which country has the highest lithium deposits? China, Australia, Chile, Argentina. Very simple question it was. Fourth, the lithium reserves found in Riasi, Jammu and Kashmir are unexplored due to which of the following reasons? The blocks are too small to apply modern mineral systems based tools. First statement. Second statement. Underdeveloped mineral reporting standards used in tender documents. Which of these reasons are there for unexplored Riasi lithium blocks? And fifth, consider the following statements and mark the correct one. Government of India aims to get 30% private vehicles as EV on Indian roads by 2030. Government of India aims to become net zero by 2070. And third, discovery of lithium reserves in India will contribute in reducing the current account deficit of the country. Which of this combination is correct? Only one and two, only three, only two and three or all of the above. Now, the MCQs of 1st of August we will be discussing. Which of the following is a Shia militant group based in West Asia? Hamas is a Sunni militant group. ISIS again a Sunni militant group. Al-Qaeda is a militant group based in Afghanistan and that is also a Sunni militant group. Hezbollah, Lebanon is the correct answer. Hezbollah based in Lebanon. Consider the following statements and mark the correct one. Hezbollah is a militant group based in Lebanon. I just told you, yes, this statement is correct. Hezbollah is against the Western influence in West Asia. Yes, its aim is this. So both one and two and that is why probably Hezbollah is against Israel. Recently, Operation Swords of Iron was in news. So, what is it? It refers to an offensive launched by Hezbollah on Israel killing 12 innocent children. No. An offensive launched by Hamas in Israel in October 2023. No. Offensive launched by Houthi rebels in the Red Sea. No. It is basically offensive launched by Israeli Defense Forces against Hamas when this attack in October 2023 was initiated by Hamas on Israel. So, D is the correct answer. Which of the following four countries is brokering a hostage deal between Hamas and Israel? USA? Yes. Iran? No. Saudi Arabia? No. Qatar? Yes. Only one and four is the correct answer. Apart from USA and Qatar, Egypt is the third country. Yes. Egypt is the third country which is brokering this deal between Israel and Hamas. But with the assassination of Hamas military leader, 
we don't know what will happen to these negotiations. And last question, which of the below mentioned countries is not part of Gulf Cooperation Council? Saudi Arabia is part of it, UAE is part of it, Qatar is part of it, Egypt is not part of it. Apart from it, Oman is part of it, Bahrain is part of it. So, these are Gulf Cooperation Council countries, Egypt is definitely not part of it. So, with this we have come to an end of today's session. I will be seeing you on Monday now with more such informative news pieces. Till then, you guys very well know what to do. Keep studying, keep reading, keep writing, keep watching the videos, keep attempting the questions and most importantly keep revising. Namaste. Jai Hind.